because they walked and talked and knew Jesus, Yahushua, when he was on the earth. And so they were qualified to be his apostles after he arose. And so that's who I learned from. Uh, is, is, is the Old Testament prophets and uh, the New Testament apostles and Yahushua himself. Uh, you can kick all of it in the butt by just asking him to lead you into what to read and what to learn. Uh, and that way he'll keep you away from the things that aren't of him. Uh, because there's two different gospels being preached in the Bible today. In the KJV you have, uh, you have Jesus and you have Paul. And, and one of the laughs I have about this whole New Age thing coming, it might take the church for a loop, but it won't take anybody that listens to this show for a loop, is that uh, they're, uh, he's they, this Jesus that's coming, this Sananda, this New Age Ascended Master, he's an author, and so is Maitreya. And so when they come, they're going to have this stark evidence that they are the writers of the Bible and the Koran, the original writers. And they're going to be able to pull out and show people exactly how they wrote those books. And, and show their handprints and blueprints all over it. So that people will believe that they are the messiahs of those books. Uh, and so you know he's just going to Pauline to death everything. Oh look, I wrote this in First Corinthians. and <laughs> I could just see it now. Um, that's why I'm not attached to the King James Bible. I'm 66 books. Come on, folks. That's an occultic number. Do you really think the Most High God and the Lord would, would end their word on 66 books, an occultic number? Uh, there's just so many things to show that the KJV itself, a translation, was manipulated. And it's that manipulation that Sananda is going to grab by the hair and wave around the world to deceive Christians with, that he's actually the author of that book. Uh, and so that's that's coming. I don't have a whole lot of information on, on particularly how he's going to do it, uh, but I see it all the time in the Bible codes. Oh, that an author, and he's going to claim to be the author of it. And uh, you know, it's not it doesn't shake my faith. Uh, doesn't shake my faith in the least uh, because translations are as good as the Garden of Eden. You have your tree of life and your tree of death. Uh, and so, uh, eat from the tree of life. Ask the Lord what it is He wants you to read. Because I would love to get rid of the, I would love to get a hold of the originals. And, and, and do some real studying on some of these, uh, areas that the KJV just blows over and, and sweeps under the rug. Comment from a listener. Last week I had this, this discussion with someone. If you learned the truth from God and it meant changing your life, what you do and believe would you change many seek and love him but aren't but don't aren't willing to do what he says but aren't willing to do what he says yes amen uh let's try to rephrase that so it probably makes some more sense if you learned a truth from god and it meant changing your life would you be willing to change it would you be willing to change your life many sit many seek and love him but they aren't willing to do what he says and it's doing what he says that matters. You know. We have to do what he says. What he leads us to do. There's nothing on this life that matters, folks, other than him. He's the only thing that matters. Could the song of Moses, question from a listener, could the song of Moses be knowledge of some type? Uh, well, they're singing the song of Moses in heaven. And so, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't want to take it literal. Uh, I have no problem taking it literal. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. You know, we'll find out what the Song of Moses is once we're in heaven. Yeah, from me. <laughs> I love it when you guys do this. <laughs> you always, I've, I've got so much information out there, I forget what I've written. From SerpentSeedLine.com. That's my website. She was impregnated and conceived by the serpent first, then she conceived a second time from Adam. It's believed and not me medically impossible that Eve got pregnant by both Satan and Adam at the same time, and thus went on to bear twins, Cain and Abel. Yeah. That's a theory out there. Um, I just said I wasn't able, ready, to discuss it. <laughs> I say I disagreed with it. <laughs> uh, were they twins? Uh... I believe so. The Bible codes refers to both of them as tall boys. It's very tall. They were both very tall. And so, uh, I don't know. It's just something I'm not ready to discuss. Oh, uh, I should have been more clear with my question. Comment from a listener. 
I was wondering what the word of God is referring to in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and then the word was with God, and the word was God. Did it mean the Torah was the word of God? Yes. At that point, when the Lord was always talking about the word of God, it was the Torah. He didn't have the KJV back then. <laughs> the word was the Torah. And the Torah was the five, first five books of Moses. And they also added in later uh, the books of prophets. And so... uh that's what I've been saying for umpteen years is that when he talked about his word, it was the Torah. And But you can't tell the church crowd that now because the church crowd, every time they read that verse, um, they're so thick skulled, thick headed, uh, they're, they're sure he's talking about the KJV. <laughs> KJV didn't exist. I was watching the History Channel and it showed how they had this this library of about three to five hundred different books and they went into this library and decided what was going to be on the in the KJV and they had this group of men in this different councils and all this some of you probably seen this uh, to figure out how they were going to put the letters together for the KJV <laughs> uh, don't put your faith in anything but the, the word himself which is the Lord himself folks you know, there's a lot of times. I've, I mean, I've read the Bible front to back hundreds and hundreds of times. One of my favorite books has always been Matthew. And one of the books the Lord's always had me in is James. Uh, James is more of a, a patience type thing. <laughs> Have patience. <laughs> but those are probably the two books I've spent the most time in because Matthew has the most red letter words of any other book in the Bible. And uh, James. And John. I love John. I've always loved John. Uh, Book of Revelation. I was just born to decipher that thing. <laughs> and so uh, just ask the Lord to to, to lead you uh, when you're reading. What he wants you to read. What he wants to show you. Because uh, you would be amazed uh, that when you look back over time, like a year or two or three or four or five, that never once he lead you to a book written by Paul. It's one of those things that makes you go, hmm. <laughs> There might be some truth to that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to make it any clearer to people. But that's it for the show tonight, folks. I'm going to wrap it up. Until next week, hopefully we'll have more calm before the storm where the Lord will be telling us what the storm is. Uh, I think for right now, we just know that uh, uh, some some problems can be coming with the famine that's coming, with the oil and gas and some of the chaos that's coming and some of this legislation that's going to be coming out from King George that could really take this nation by shock and uh, and so I see that coming up next on the calendar folks some of this uh, new world order legislation that this country just isn't prepared to see yet and isn't ready for yet uh, and they're about to experience it uh, and he's always been pretty much bold in our faces to begin with with the Patriot Act and all these other uh, signing statements and, and legisl- executive orders that he's come out with. We haven't seen anything yet like the one he's about to come out with. And it's going to be one that starts to go to curtail the free speech of Americans. And it's going to cause a lot of drama and a lot of chaos in this country. And that's what's coming up next. That's what I see coming up next other than all these other things. We could be at war and we could be at this or that, whatever. Uh, but one of the things the Lord's showing me, um, for me to see, is that this legislation is coming. And so that's what I'm warning about, uh, other than the fact that, uh, start stocking up on food, uh, if he leads you to. If he doesn't, maybe you're gonna be fine. Maybe your area is not gonna be out of food. Maybe I'm gonna be out of food because my husband gets laid off, or, you know, people's situations are different. Uh, and so you have to think of that too, because, I mean, like I said, Israel is all over the world, and what I say for me or for somebody else doesn't, doesn't pertain to everybody else. And so if it resonates with your spirit, then act on that and ask the Lord to confirm it uh, and to make it feel like uh, to, in your spirit something for you to be doing too. Uh, until next week, everybody. God bless. <laughs>